Hello students, welcome to the part 4 of noise analysis video series. In this video, we are discussing about the second type of noise source that exists in the MOSFET. A flicker noise is a voltage noise component that originates due to the presence of dangling bond at the interface between the silicon dioxide and the silicon layer in a metal oxide semiconductor structure of MOSFET. These dangling bonds are created due to the incomplete bond of silicon atoms at the top of bulk silicon layer and at the bottom surface of the silicon dioxide. And from the basic chemistry, we know a silicon atom has four valence electrons and it needs four more electrons to complete the valence band. So in the case of a bulk, it creates a covalent bond with its neighbor such that it completes all its valence band with the electron. Also in the case of a silicon dioxide medium, which has an oxygen atom, has two valence electron in them. So a silicon atom in general combines with four atoms, each one sharing one of the electron between them in order to complete its valence band. But at the interface between two different medium, you could note that some of the silicon atoms are left out with an incomplete bond. And this incomplete bond will act as a trap where the charges that runs between the source terminal and the drain terminal will be trapped when there is a current flow between the drain and the source. And these trapped charges will then be released at later times. So this trapping and releasing mechanism is so random that they introduce some sort of noise in the drain current flow along the source and the drain. And also the severity of this mechanism depends purely on the flow rate of charge across this channel, which means that when the charges flow at a faster rate, then the probability of being trapped inside these incomplete bonds are less than compared to the charge carriers that are moving slowly across the source and the drain. So this should give us a clue that the power spectral density of this flicker noise must have a dependency on the frequency or in other words must have a dependency on the speed at which the charge flows across the source and the drain. And since because one could model the flicker noise as a kind of voltage noise component, its power spectral density is given as SV of F with a process parameter or sometimes it is also called as the flicker noise coefficient K divided by the oxide capacitance per unit area multiplied by the area of the channel into 1 over F. Since because this power spectral density has the term 1 upon F term, there exists and another name for this flicker noise which is called as 1 over F noise and because of that uh, in general we can re-represent this label SV of F as SV of 1 over F times that of F okay rather than just simply specifying it as SV of F we are adding this extra index to it in order to denote that it's a flicker noise and it is different from the thermal noise power spectral density. The flicker noise in general is modeled as a voltage noise source in series with the gate. So whatever the noise power spectral density that I wrote in the previous slide is basically the component that exists across the gate of, of, of a MOSFET. And due to which one could summarize this entire phenomena as the trap and the release mechanism occurs more often at low frequency because of the presence of this 1 over F term in its power spectral density and due to which it is also called as 1 over F noise. And 
again when we look across the power spectral density you could see that none of the terms are related to the biasing conditions of the circuit that is it is not dependent on gm nor it is dependent on any kind of current source that flow through the circuit but rather it depends on the device dimensions like length and the width and due to which whenever we try to design a low noise amplifier one would require a large area in order to suppress this flicker noise in the amplifier and due to the presence of this 1 over f term in its power spectral density when you try to plot the power spectral density over this frequency axis you could see that the power spectral density degrades at much higher frequencies than compared to the power spectral magnitude at the lower frequency. Now let us do a simple exercise in order to compute the total thermal noise as well as the 1 over F noise in the drain current of a MOSFET for a band where F1 is specified as 1 kilohertz and F2 is specified as 1 megahertz. Now since we are interested in the drain current we need to evaluate the variance of the noise current component because of the thermal noise as well as the variance because of the 1 over F noise in terms of current component. So first let us try to evaluate the variance of the thermal noise current component where TH in this particular notation denotes that we are discussing about the variance of a thermal noise and that is written as we know that this transistor is biased in a saturation region and due to which one could use the gamma value to be as 2 by 3 and due to which I substitute 2 by 3 value in the place of gamma times that of gm and since because this entire power spectral density which is denoted as doesn't have any frequency term the integral between these two limits will end up having 10 to the power 6 minus 10 to the power 3 and as we know that the megahertz term is higher in magnitude than compared to the value of 1 kilohertz one could easily neglect this impact of this 1 kilohertz term out of this equation so now let us try to compute the variance of the noise current component due to the 1 over f noise now in the previous slide the power spectral density of the 1 over f noise voltage source is given as and one could model the variance of this quantity being represented as a kind of noise source that exists across the gate of a mass transistor and now we are looking for the variance of a noise current component across the drain terminal so one has to convert this voltage noise spectrum into a current noise spectrum at the drain so one could use this noise shaping property that we have discussed in the part 3 of our video now based on this we know that the input to this system is basically a voltage noise so we have a voltage as an input and the output we are expecting out of the system is a current component I now this H of F could then be returned as output by input which is I by V now what is this I by V term that we have out of this transistor model so in order to compute the transfer function of I by V form we need to draw a small signal model for this structure now the gate drain and the source and we know that across the drain and the source there is a small signal current which depends on the value of VGS and that current component could then be written as GM times VGS now the way that I have modeled this current flow depends based on the polarity of the value of VGS but when it comes to a noise calculation the polarity doesn't matter in a way that the current direction never matters while computing the power spectral density of a noise component and we also have 
a resistive component across the source and the drain, which is labeled as R0. And this is the small signal model that we have here. And across the input, what I have is a kind of voltage, noise, variance. And we are expecting a current noise variance at the output. Now, when I try to short this particular node in order to compute the current component at the drain, clearly this gives us that the transfer function of this system, which is IN by VN to be equal to GM. So basically in short, the transfer function of this whole system that has been modeled with respect to a small signal model is basically a GM. Just because we have a current component, which is a voltage controlled current source. So now that let us utilize this transfer function in order to convert this voltage power spectral density into a current power spectral density. So due to which let me write as and this should give us a value which is equal to gm square into So now that we got this, we want to compute the variance of it. Now, as usual, while we'll be using this Wiener kitchen relation to convert this power spectral density into its variance, and one could write the variance as something like this and integrate this entire quantity over this specified frequency band of one kilohertz to one megahertz. Now, after doing some simple algebra, one would end up having a quantity which is given as gm square k cyx length into width. And this one over f term while integrating will get updated as ln of f and over this frequency band, when we substitute, it becomes 10 to the power 3. So now that we have computed the variance of this one over f noise in terms of a current component. Now let us look across one of the most important uh, parameter when we deal with both the thermal noise and the uh, flicker noise. As, as you could see that this flicker noise is more dominant at low frequencies just because of the 1 over f noise. But as the frequency gets increased, what happens is that the power spectral density of this 1 over f noise keeps reducing. But once you cross a particular frequency, which is marked as corner frequency, the 1 over F noise becomes much smaller than compared to the thermal noise. Now, one could define this corner frequency is a frequency at which the power spectral density of the thermal noise current component is equal to the power spectral density of 1 over F noise current component. So at frequency f that is equal to fc, we have the situation. Now substituting these quantities across them, one could evaluate the factor of corner frequency using this simple algebra. So clearly you could be able to see that this corner frequency depends on both the di device dimensions as well as it depends on the bias current flow through the transconductance term. Now we'll just do one more last exercise using this corner frequency expression. Now in this, the device dimensions are being given as 100 micron for the width and 0.5 micron for the length of a MOS device. And the value of GM is also given as 10 milli Siemens and even the corner frequency is specified to be equal to 500 kilohertz. And we have been asked to compute the flicker noise coefficient K or KP. Okay. So again, just try to recollect that the corner frequency is defined as the flicker noise coefficient KP or K divided by the oxide capacitance per unit area times the length and the width times the GM 
into 3 by 8 times that of the Boltzmann constant times that of the temperature. Now in this case uh, we are not given a specific value for the value of COX but rather what is given is the thickness of the oxide. Now in this case one could consider the permittivity of the silicon dioxide and using that one could evaluate oxide capacitance by unit area to be equal to 3.84 femtofarad per micrometer square and also the value of T is not been specified. In that condition one could use a room temperature of 300 Kelvin in this particular problem and based on all these values the only unknown that we have in this entire expression is this noise coefficient where I have specified it as k rather than kp. Now we would get a value of 1.06 into 10 to the power minus 25 volt square farad for this frequent noise coefficient. So with this exercise we will be ending this part 4 where we discussed about different types of noise sources that exist in the CMOS circuitry. In the next video, we will discuss about the noise representation and we will try to solve a few more problems based on what we have learned till now. Thank you.